Hey guys, Dean here. Today we're going to be going through 10 different passive income ideas and strategies on how to generate money and income from a few different various sources. These aren't going to be entirely passive in the sense that you are going to have to put real effort into building them up and completely maintaining them, but there are a few different routes which you can make money in, which you can split and diversify your money making proceeds into a few different categories. For an example, instead of just making money off YouTube, you could make money from three or four different things to support supplement that income and provide a more stable income source. So without further ado, let's jump into a few different passive income ideas that you can start today. We'll talk about how tough they are to begin and maintain and how you can start making some more money. Now, in terms of passive income, the only real world passive income you'll get, which is entirely passive, is from something like stocks and shares, which is just going to make you money overnight. Most of these sources, you are gonna have to actually put a ton of effort in and actually build them up. So don't go in with the mindset that you just want free money money which requires minimal or zero effort most of these will require some downtime in actually building them up before you can maintain them with less effort than you put into to start out with for an example just before we begin a youtube channel requires the most effort in the very first build up to building up the channel and then as it grows you can slightly maintain it with a little less effort but you always need to put in real world effort and work to actually sustain it as an income source or it will die out so let's jump into some of these different paths of income sources. So the first one is stocks and shares and if you want to learn about investing in stocks and shares, how to invest in index funds and ETFs and mutual funds, I do actually have an entire video which goes through the whole process and walks through step by step how you can set up a brokerage account on a stock broker website, how you can first link your bank account and how to set up an account and start investing right away and which funds to actually choose from for a more stable investment which has a very low risk to it. Now you can click on the video down below I will link it down below and I'll also put a card on the right hand side of this video for you to click on too if you want to check out that video that will go a little bit more in depth into the whole stocks and shares situation and it'll show you how to start from step zero what stocks and shares are and just give you more comprehension on what it is so you can actually understand entirely on getting into that field now just for the basics since we have a short time frame for this video for each subcategory and section I am going to say I would recommend first making an account on free trade which is a really awesome app which means that you just pay a small monthly fee to set up an ISA or ISA account and you can invest up to £20,000 each year entirely tax free without capital gains tax. I do have a link down in the description below you can use which is my personal affiliate code which does actually help me out and in return I think we can both get rewarded with some kind of share which could be of some random value if you use my link and if I get the commission from your link for an example. Now basically you set up an account on free trade and then you link your bank account and from there you can invest in nearly any stock and share. Now I'd recommend first just investing some of your money into the S&P 500 because it has an average of a 10% annual return each year and always seems to do pretty good and stable. For the least risk I just recommend investing long term over a series of maybe 10, 20, 30 years and just keep putting money that you're okay to part with or lose into the S&P 500 or a similar ETF or index fund and just watch it compound over time. If you want to learn more about compounding and growth and investing wisely, do check out the video which I initially mentioned on stocks and shares. The reason why stocks and shares are mostly passive is they do pay something called dividends, which if you own certain shares, the stockholders or the company which actually owns the company and shares their stocks will actually issue what's called dividends maybe every quarter of the year or every third quarter each year, for an example. They'll issue a small percentage, which is kind of like a bonus, which they pay to shareholders, which is kind of like a perk of owning shares. A dividend end will be a small percentage which they'll split across into the shareholders so for an example if they pay like 10 million out to shareholders and you own like five percent of that business in terms of the shares you will get five percent of that 10 million which they're paying out to shareholders and it's kind of like a little extra return which you can get which is actually separate from the growth itself from the stock which actually grows over time so you can get passive money from dividends every few quarters if the share actually supports that because not all funds or shares actually pay out dividends so that's one close thing to look out for and also the stock will compound over time and actually be worth more in value and you'll make a slight return on it. Now the next one which is passive income source number two is actually investing in cryptocurrency and crypto in general. Now there's a few reasons why crypto can be quite lucrative and it's basically exactly the same as all the points which we got into in the stocks and shares subcategory which is the first one. Now the reason why crypto is really good is obviously there's a lot of different coins you can invest in and 
it's a huge growing market, which in my opinion has more of a potential to make you a ton more money than stocks and shares. And recently I made a big risk on withdrawing a lot of my stocks and shares and throwing into crypto, which might be a little bit risky, especially if you're a beginner. Now, the reason why crypto is good is because the actual percentages of the return are so much higher than stocks. But one reason for this is it's also very high risk. So with crypto, it's more of a high risk to high reward, whereas stocks is kind of like a lower or medium risk and a kind of low to medium reward as well. So there's always positives and negatives in each different investment opportunity. So crypto is really good. I'm invested in a few different coins, mainly Monero, which is a privacy coin, and I have some in Ethereum too. Now you can invest in a few different coins in crypto. I do actually have an entirely separate video, just like with socks and shares on how you can first begin and get started in investing in cryptocurrency. It completely explains what crypto is, which coins are the best to invest in, how to avoid common crypto scams, and what should you actually physically be putting your money into. I'm also going to be making an NFT video, which is in the whole category of crypto, which is another source of making money. So make sure to subscribe and check out for that soon. Now, one thing which I didn't really cover in the cryptocurrency beginner's guide, which is what I'm going to use this particular video for, is one way you can make passive income from cryptocurrency. So one example is you can actually make passive income by actually receiving dividends just like you can with stocks and shares, which is kind of a relatively completely new concept which has come into the crypto scene in the previous few years. So basically you invest in a certain coin and by holding that coin you get rewarded by actually being paid a dividend and they'll usually pay you in some random crypto coin. One of the most popular ones is holding VeChain. VeChain coin pays you dividends. I do actually have a friend who holds a lot of crypto and he told me he actually holds a few different dividend paying coins and I believe VeChain might have been one of them too and basically he gets paid every month a certain percentage of his investment and he makes a pretty healthy return which he can use on things like food. So these coins if you already have a lot of money and you invest into them you can get a really healthy dividend return from them. Obviously percentages differ and you need to make sure that the coin you get paid for holding it is actually something which you can flip and sell for real world fiat currency or trade for another crypto coin which has value otherwise you're just holding a coin and getting dividends which are basically worth nothing. So you have to do your research but this is a really awesome way of making extra money off crypto too. The next one is actually starting a YouTube channel. So basically starting a YouTube channel is probably one of the most lucrative ways of making passive income. But a lot of people get it confused that you can maybe make one video per month or one video per week and keep the channel entirely active. Now this can be the case for some people who get some really high views on certain videos and can sustain them over a long period of time. And it also depends on what niche you're into. For an example, a channel like this, which is about finance, would make slightly more money than say a gaming channel which is my main YouTube channel. Now with something like a gaming channel you have to post a lot more frequently to get a high amount of money in terms of ad revenue whereas something like a fitness channel you could probably post one per week and still get quite a lot of money as long as your monthly views are kind of roughly similar. Now making a YouTube channel is really cool because you can base it on one of your passions or hobbies that you really enjoy and like and then monetize it by putting ads on it. The only problem is right now you do actually have to have a thousand subscribers and four thousand hours of watch time to be eligible for monetization to actually make money off those ads. So there is actually real effort you have to put in to build it up before you can actually reap all the rewards from it. This is something which I mentioned in the intro and doubled down on it because you are going to have to put a lot of money into a YouTube channel. I personally put around two years of serious focus and hard work into my gaming channel before it actually made a profit and started making me real money. And that was from starting many, many years ago just off of pure passion when I had no clue you could even make money off it. So something like a YouTube channel has to be passion based or based off some topic which you're actually really enthusiastic about. If you make it off a topic which you don't like or you have no investment in, you'll usually give up before it actually becomes successful. How many of your friends have made a channel and then completely given up on it or not really taken it seriously? It has to be fueled by passion and something which you actually know something about because YouTube channels and videos are about offering value. You can't make money off a YouTube channel without giving some kind of value in return or people aren't really going to be worried about watching it. That's why if you post a random vlog, it's not going to really kick off because people don't really care about you until you build up that relationship with the audience. I am going to make an entirely different video soon on how to start a YouTube channel for beginners. I will link that in this video when that comes out too for some more information. But a YouTube channel can be really fun and it can be a great hobby to start and it can make money eventually providing that's not your main focus when you actually create it. Just think, can you put two years of serious effort into building up a YouTube channel before it's successful? And if the answer is yes, then I'd recommend really building one. Number four 
is selling digital products. So this is kind of like a blanket term and a basic coverage of this subsection and that's selling digital products. So one example of this is eBooks for an example. And I am gonna do some more subcategories in the next few points for digital products, but this mainly covers things like eBooks. So digital products can be really lucrative too in terms of making passive income. The only downside is they actually require a little bit of push in terms of marketing to actually sell them and push them to an audience who are willing to buy them. This usually requires you to have some kind of social media influence already established, like a YouTube channel in the previous point, or for you to actually pay someone like an influencer or pay for mass marketing on a social media platform to actually push your product, otherwise people will never find out about them. But this specifically works really well as a supplementary source of passive income if you're already a YouTuber or already have some kind of presence. If you make something like a digital product, and we're gonna keep using the example of an ebook, then you can make that product, which may require many weeks or months or maybe a year or two to make, but once you've actually finished making it and editing it and making sure it's of the highest quality, once you put it on the market and actually sell it, it requires no effort to actually maintain it because you've already put all the effort into making it. So after you actually make it and produced it, then after that stage, it's entirely passive and you just leave it online and do a little bit of minimal effort in terms of marketing or pushing it. And it can continue to drive sales and generate a profit for many months or years to come. For an example, if you're a fitness influencer in bodybuilding or fitness and you make some kind of ebook on how to get bigger muscles or how to diet more efficiently or how to be better a different sport like soccer and then you sell that book especially if you're an influencer in that certain sub niche you can keep pushing that book and it will keep continuing to drive sales over time without you having to actually update the book or add more content to it if you don't need to so digital products especially ebooks like business books are a really good way of making profit providing that you can actually push them to an audience to actually buy them which may require a little bit of business expertise and marketing knowledge number five is affiliate marketing which is another one like all of these which seem to really work well if you have a YouTube presence or some kind of Instagram. Now, affiliate marketing is basically using affiliate links and fencing them on something like a video description or a product review and then generating yourself income off that link. So to put it into a better way of explaining it, let's say that I make a video on reviewing this camera, which I'm currently recording with, which is the Canon G7X Mark III. If I did a video on the G7X Mark III and I talked about why this camera is so great, I talk about a few of the cons, but mostly why it's great for its price and why it's an efficient product and that video gets a few thousand views or a few hundred thousand views a lot of people are going to be interested in buying that camera well if I find that camera on Amazon and I sign up for their Amazon Associates program for an example which I believe is the best affiliate program I could generate a link for that product put it in my video description and then anyone who watches my video review and clicks on that product link and buys it will actually generate me a small percentage commission of the sale of that product and over time if you have a few hundred people per month buying these products, it can amount to a few hundred dollars, which you can gain in passive income every single month, which is a nice addition to supplement your main income source. Now, like I said, there's many different affiliate programs and it really is based on what fields you're in, which niche you're in, if you run a YouTube channel, if you have a blog like a website and where you're putting these actual affiliate links. But you can get affiliate links for nearly every single product and you can generate a really nice amount of income on them. There's a few different websites you can do this, like fitness, gym, gear products and also things like Clickbank where you can do affiliate deals and try and sell products which are already made like ebooks and video courses. But I'd recommend using Amazon Associates because it's probably the easiest to make money off and it's the most widely known and trusted so it will likely generate more sales. The next one is selling courses. So you can do this on many different websites. Selling courses can be good if you have a particular craft or a talent or some kind of hobby that you're really good at and a lot of people want to learn from you. So as with YouTube, if I made a lot of different free videos and tutorials offering free knowledge to people, but they wanted to know more or they wanted more of my time to explain something, I could then create a course for people who are further interested to enroll on or pay for. And then I could basically create some kind of class or share one of my skills and people could pay money for it to actually watch that course. Now, as with anything, this requires a lot of time in terms of planning, scripting, and then filming and producing the course, which may require you to have an editor or may take a lot of your time if you want to completely produce it yourself. But if you can create a really high quality course and then sell it, like I said before, just like an ebook, you don't have to put any further effort into actually producing it or editing it. You just have to maintain the product and market it over time and it will continue to drive and produce sales. Now there's a few different websites you can actually create and sell courses on. One of these is Udemy, which I believe you can sell courses on and 
people pay for the individual course itself, which is a flat fee. And there's also Skillshare, which I will link down below in the description if you want to click on the link to sign up for Skillshare for a free trial, I believe. Basically, Skillshare is kind of like a subscription way of it. So instead of Udemy, where people pay for each individual course, people actually pay for a monthly subscription on Skillshare and then they watch loads of different courses. So if I made a course on Skillshare on maybe how to make money with cryptocurrency and then linked it on my YouTube video, maybe some of my subscribers might sign up for the course and I will make money off that course. Now, if it was on Udemy, if that's what I choose as a platform to sell my course, I would make just a flat fee from that particular course if people chose to buy it. But on Skillshare, since they have access to all the courses on the website, when they have a subscription, they're more likely to click on my course because they have an access to a huge diverse library. So it would be easier to get people to watch my course on something like Skillshare, although I would probably make slightly less money depending on how popular it is. You can make a ton of money off Skillshare though. And for an example, instead of making a flat fee, I believe Skillshare pays you based on the watch time of your course. So however long the person actually watches your course for, that's actually what bases how much you're paid for it from. And I also think it splits the percentage of what they're paying per month in relation to the watch time and that's how much you get paid for it. So it's a little bit different in terms of the monetization and how you get paid on Skillshare. But it's a really lucrative thing you want to look into. You can make a course on anything. For an example, a course on art and drawing if you're really good as an artist, a course on photography, how to change the ISO on a camera and use all the different features like the aperture, what the different lenses do for an example. It really depends on your craft and what you're clever with. But you could create a course on theoretically anything nowadays. As long as you're offering someone value and the product and the topic of it is something which is very searchable, it's a really good way of making profit. The next one is memberships. Now this could be split into many different things. So this could be either making your very own membership website, which would further require you advertising and marketing the website to get people to actually know about it, or creating a membership site through a different platform that's already pre-existing. For an example, YouTube has a memberships feature which you can enable. I can't remember how many subscribers you have to have to enable it, but I have it on my main channel, which is gaming. And basically people can pay a certain percentage each month, like $4.99, $5.99, and you can create separate different tiers which cost different prices and then you can offer your audience members different perks for subscribing to each tier. In turn it will support you as a creator and you can give them things like emojis to use in your live stream chats or the YouTube comments. You can offer things like different merchandise or access to things in video games for an example and you can give them rewards for each tier that they pay for. So that also offers your audience value for actually obtaining a membership and then you get money from the membership itself. As well as YouTube memberships there's also Patreon. So if you're a creator, you can make a Patreon page and say that you're making a game or making YouTube videos and you need to offer the audience something in return for investing in your content and channel. For an example, again, you could give them merchandise like mugs or t-shirts. You could give them thank you letters or an email and basically just offer something for them to invest in your channel. This is also a really good way for people to support you if you're not making enough money off your current craft. As with membership websites, the best way to make a website would probably be to make a WordPress website with a membership plugin, which allows you to create a membership area. And then you'd have to produce, create, and maintain all of the content with regular posts on it to keep the website rolling. Number nine is actually starting a blog. Now, why is a blog a good way of generating passive income? Well, as with a few other things on this list, a blog requires a ton of effort to do. That's because you're probably going to want to do like maybe one blog post a day, which requires really good writing. Maybe you have to be good at English literature or English language in terms of writing a high quality blog post. And you need to be writing about a topic which you know something about or something that's really trending at the moment. You could look on a website like Google Trends to see what's really popular right now and write an article based off that, which might be a hype-based article, which is only something people will search for short-term. Or you could write an evergreen piece of content like a blog around something like journaling, which will be searched for for a very long time. The reason why blogging can be effective in making passive income and money is because just like YouTube, you could sign up for Google ads and then put ads on all of your blog articles. This means that if people don't have ad block, they can click the ads on your page and in turn, you'll get money from that too. There's a few different plugins and methods of making money off your website and ways to monetize it, which you can find if you happen to run a blog too. Although putting ads on it is probably the most popular way to make some money off your website. Although there will probably be less views on your website than if you made YouTube. And since so many people have ad block nowadays, unless your website is really popular, you might not make so much money off just ads alone. Although you can also supplement this with making a membership area on your website, like we mentioned before, or just hosting your YouTube videos on your website too. Using many multiple
multiple of these passive income streams at the same time is the best way to actually make a good sum of money in the end. As they say, never rely on one sole source of income, otherwise you'll always be a slave to the money. And the 10th and final passive income source I'm going to touch over and glaze over in this video is starting a podcast. Now this isn't something which I currently do, although I think it would be a really cool hobby to do and start a podcast and talk to people about things. Perhaps I'll have to start one on this Dean Vlogs channel sometime in the future and talk about things like crypto or things which interest me, but for now I don't personally have a podcast, although I do listen to a lot of podcasts. For an example, Joe Rogan's podcast, the H3 podcast, I do listen to quite a lot of big podcasts and really enjoy them. Now the reason why podcasts can make some good passive income is mainly from the sponsors. Now you can't really make much money off a podcast unless you have sponsors because it's a medium which completely relies off people sponsoring your content. So if you just start out and you have maybe 100 monthly listeners, you're not really going to make much money. But eventually if it becomes a heavy hitter on Google Podcasts or Spotify or YouTube, sponsors will email you and you can pick up different contracts for different sponsors and there's the potential to make a lot of money if you create one of the bigger podcasts. To start from zero and become a really big podcast, that's going to require a huge amount of effort and the return is most likely not going to be high unless you're one of the lucky ones. This is one of those side income streams that you mainly start as a hobby, but the work to reward ratio is rather imbalanced in terms of you're going to put a lot of effort in and the reward is probably not going to be very high unless you're successful. This is kind of one of those side projects which would be really good to start if you're already a popular influencer because it's quite easy for influencers nowadays to just start a podcast and for it to hit and be successful basically off the get-go. And that concludes the top 10 passive income strategies and sources which you can start today and build and maintain over a course of time in order to diversify the amount of money that you make from a few different methods instead of just one. This is a great step to start in terms of seeking financial freedom which is something which we're all trying to work towards. If you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about money, finance, crypto, stocks and travel do subscribe to this channel with notifications turned on, drop a like on the video and if you have any questions about any of these passive income sources drop them down in the comment section below and I'll try and reply to them as soon as possible. And if there's any other passive income streams which I missed from this video which are really lucrative or helpful do post them down below too to help out people watching this video and so I can maybe feature them next time if I bring out a part two. Thanks for watching.